Hello, welcome to Capital Market Live on Channels Television. I'm Ladi Williams. Let's take a look at how your money performed in the week with global headwinds weighing on sentiment to the market. Let's start off with uh, Europe. Uh, right now, we see European markets close mix Friday after suffering the worst quarter since the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic as inflation and uh, interest rate hikes continue to weigh on sentiment. The FTSE closed down 0.01% as marginal while DAX indexes rose by 0.23% and the CAC uh, rose by 0.14% to close the week. Moving on to Asia now. Asia-Pacific markets uh, reversed earlier gains and fell on the uh, first day of the new quarter as investors digested positive factory activity data from private survey in China. The Nikkei 225 in Japan fell 1.73% to close at 25,935 points on the topics declined 1.38%. And uh, the fast retailing uh, slipped about 4% in the uh, trading session. Sentiment to Japan's large manufacturers worsened in the April to June period, according to Bank of Japan's quarterly uh, Tenkan uh, Business Sentiment Survey. The headline index for large manufacturers sentiment came in at 9, a decline from previous quarter's uh, reading of about 14 points. And stocks rose on Friday to start the quarter after the S&P 500 closed out its worst first half of performance in decades. The Dow Jones Industrial Average rose by 321.83 points uh, to about 31,097. The S&P 500 rose 1.1% to 3,825 points, while the Nasdaq Composite was also up by 0.9% to 11,127 points. Well, let's uh, take a look at some of these uh, uh, global markets now we have joined us right here in the studio Mokhtar Mohammed, CEO of Finance with Mokhtar join us right here giving us his weekend great to have you always a pleasure laddie <laughs> <laughs> so uh, looking at these um global markets now you know the first half wasn't pretty uh, at all for for this market how do you think the bottom is in at this point you, well, if you look at the U.S. market, on Thursday they did their worst fall in 50 years. And at the end of the, like you, you said in your report, we, we saw that it, they had their worst fall in 10 years, in a decade. So if you look at that, you said, oh, at of Thursday, it was more or less like their worst fall in 50 years. And at the close of market on Friday, it's just their worst fall in a decade. So you could breaking say, records. You could say breaking record, <laughs> but now one was very negative, one looks a little bit positive. So it shows that um, the bottom up, they are already at the bottom. But again, when you look at other markets, also you, this American market did 20.6% downside. The UK market did 17% um, downside. The Asian market also did about 16% um, downside. So when you look at all those downside, and then if you look at the meeting that was held in, in, in Portugal by the three major central bank governors, that of the US, the UK, and the European Union, said that the era of um, low um, moderation in terms of inflation and um, no low interest money. rate is, is gone. Right. It's gone for now. So when you look at that, you know that the problem with the global market has to do with the hike in terms of um, interest rate. So, and you, like they said, so you, you not see that abiding yet. And so what we we'll see is the investors look for a good value, especially in the long term. No one will be thinking short term now because the market is, is too volatile to begin to think short term. So you look for value in the, in the very good stocks in the long term, knowing that whatever is happening to them now is artificial. And, and looking into the second half, do you see you know, these global stocks actually outperforming? Well, if, you, if the body language from the three central bank governors of the world is anything to go by, then you, you are still scared because the um, U.S. is battling with inflation, um, the worst inflation in 40 years. The U.K. have the worst inflation in 30 years. There seems to be breaking record every week and every month. So it, it, it's not looking good unless something um, major happens during the week, like we expect the U.S. Um, the U.S. President Joe Biden is planning to meet with the major oil companies and to see how they can bring down cost of um, gas. And also, they are proposing a federal court in terms of petroleum product. That could also be a game changer for the American market. And for the UK, um, they're still struggling. How would they still want to deal with Russia in terms of, um, or looking for other partners to partner in the area of gas? So um, it's going to be a challenging week. And like they said, it's going to be a challenging month. Even if we have a, um, even if we have a peace settlement between Russia and Ukraine in the shortest possible time, 
the backlog will take some time it's to get It's not out. like the markets will start shooting up. No, it, it, definitely will, it definitely will respond positively to the news, but to see those numbers going as high as it was before they went, and uh, it, 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 will be, it will be an up to leg start for the market. Right, and let's uh, bring it home now. We see uh, the, the market closed uh, the week not so bad. It wasn't bad, <laughs> a, 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 a little 0, 0.0 something, not too bad. But the first half has been quite good for yes, the Nigerian market. Definitely, definitely, yeah. laddie. When you look at what is happening in the global market, exactly. you're doing minus 20 points something, and then you look at the Nigerian market, we're doing plus 20 points something. So we're it, doing it, where almost, we're... It, it almost makes me feel like whenever I see global markets going south or going the wrong way we i should just jump into the nigerian, nigerian market, market. <laughs> well it depends it depends you see um if you look at those um numbers you realize that some of the stocks are doing 52 days low 52 weeks low if you may especially the banking stocks and, and then if you look at what are really driven the market to this stage then you look at mtn then you look like set those seems to be the driver that has made us see those numbers like that. Outside of that, if you look at some individual equities, you realize that they are actually in their all-time low. So, so um, even though the, the market is looking generally... Generally uh, looking good, but when you look at um, some of the numbers, remember, let me give two or three stocks. Zenet Bank was at the start of last month or two months ago was selling for, for almost 25 naira. Is doing is doing 21 naira 85 kobo. I um, mean, uh, Gitiko uh, has moved from from a height of about 23 naira to a low of about 20 naira 45 kobo. And um, UBA also have done that from from a height of about 9 naira to a low of 7 naira 40 kobo. So when you look at those um, numbers, but when you look at um, MTN, you see that even in spite of the the the, the it's doing about 239 naira. If you look at where it was coming from, from from a from a low of 200, then you also you look at um, Sepla also have gone to a high of about 1,500. So you 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 see, you see the then you know let's forget the bigger the biggest mover in terms of the beginning of the year up to now still remain um, Guinness Nigerian PLC has moved from a from a from a low of 30 naira to a height of about 98 naira. So. When you're a high of about 19 naira 50 kobo. So. Quite an incredible rise for, for that one. Quite an incredible rise. But, but what do you see for the laggards in the market? Is it time to start taking position there or just leave them be? I, I, I think it depends on your investment goal. It depends on, like I said, um, the market with the challenge. You remember that the world has become a global village. What we see in Nigeria in terms of inflation is what is doing happening in the outside world. Um, you see American doing double-digit inflation. Nobody imagined that. We are already doing about 17 point something percent. We are used to double. We are used to double, but right. we are not used to this high double. Mm -hmm. The last time we do high double like this was something like 2015. So we are almost 18, 18 percent in terms of inflation. So when you look at that, then uh, the market in terms, you, 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 you tend to look at, um, do you have the stamina to wait? Mm. I think that's what every... Only that wants to play the market should be thinking of the stamina to wait. Yeah, at, at this point. Well, uh, looking at you know some of these uh, stocks right now, you know this past week, which ones uh, shine for you? Oh, well, <laughs> you look when you when you look at stocks. Sometimes you, you 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 if you are there, then you look at the one that is shining for you. If you are not, if you are there, then it's not shining for you. You, right. you, you, you feel bad. Exactly. Then if you are not in there or you are planning to in, go in there, you look at the one that is going down and you say, okay, this one it seems to look good going in. I think if the half year, um, looking at that, and then you look at um, those stocks that are going to be paying interim dividend, you look at their price. Now, I think it's very, very exciting uh, when you look at GDCO selling for as low as 29 45 kobo, we know that no matter what, they were going to pay 30 kobo. Um, GT, um, uh, I mean, uh, Assets Bank will pay 30 kobo, even if they are selling at 9 naira and 25 kobo. We know that um, you'll be even at 7 naira uh, 45 kobo, we still pay you 20, 20 kobo interim dividend. Zenet will pay 3 naira, even if he's selling at 21 naira 80 kobo. So you begin to look at dividend yield. By, by inflation, by, by other uh, investment vehicles like the Fins income space. So those that had the low price seems to be the most exciting now because you can go in there and you'll be able to make intense of capital appreciation in the long run and also dividend payout in the short term.
quite interesting. No, looking at how good the uh, Nigerian exchange has performed, you know, for the first half. Uh, how does that impact the economy? How does a bull market impact <coughs> any economy? And how does, you know, a bear market also uh, do Is the it, same? It depends on the number of citizens that are playing that market. And if you look at the Nigerian market of of recent, until when we have that, um, indigenous investors are beginning to play the market to a level. I, I don't think it looks so good with indigenous investors. Foreign investors seem to be the one enjoying the market. But because of the exchange rate volatility now, we are not seeing them there. So a bull market tends to favor investors that are there. A bear market seems to favor investors that are planning to go in. So it depends, again, but in terms of our economy, um, when you look at our um, liquidity ratio of the average Nigeria or the middle class Nigeria, or even the very rich Nigeria, it's not looking good for all of us when you look at the soaring price in times of gas. And most uh, houses do, do have to run generators. Even most companies just do. Uh, so they don't have the liquidity to come into the market to even enjoy either the bearish or the bullish run. So it, it, it's, 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 it's a big challenge. And so um, when it's impacting the economy, I, I don't think it's impacting so much because how many Nigerians are really have the resources to begin to invest in this market when it's bullish or when it's bearish. So they think of the survivors. Those Nigerians that have been there, for a while, and those that are so not, some the of them are not even putting in so much liquidity right. into the market. They just maintain what they have there just to end dividend. And some of them, it's only the institutional investors like the pension fund administrators or the high net investors that used to play the fixed income space in terms of treasury B or the bond market that seems to be the one that are coming to the market that are up in the market. So that's why you've not been able to see the kind of uh, uh, bullish runs that you normally would have seen go in for the next two to three, four months. Because most of those people that are playing the market now are short term investors, those that used to play the treasury bill, the fixed income, so because those returns in those places are not fantastic any longer. They come to the stock market and they want to do the same 90 days, 180 days, some of them. And so that's why you, you might not see those kind of bullish runs that you see. So, in terms of favoring the economy, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not everybody. Right. And, and looking at the headwinds now, the global headwinds. You know, investors, it's not an easy time for investors, you know, in, in any market. We're seeing, we're seeing them hammered in crypto market. We're seeing them hammered in the global, you know, space. Where is the best place to pack money right now? <laughs> Ladi, maybe you're not looking at the crypto market. I think the crypto market is the worst hit. Oh, yes. It was the worst hit. I, hammered. I, I mean, yeah. it, um, and somebody was telling me about the, is it, um, coin, is it one coin? That have lost about 98 percent. Oh yes. Within, I mean, that right. is huge. 98 percent. But so, I think they're worse hit because they give the most gain. So they, they give the most gain in terms of in terms of profit. Uh, profit right. And, and you know their profits are not based on fundamentals. Exactly. So that's why we keep saying that once the ship come to the shore, fundamental seems to play a bigger role in stabilization, in price stabilization. Right. In when the downtime comes and when the uptime comes, those that can go up sharply and remain there are those that have good fundamentals. So uh, if you are looking at that, I think for now, investors will be looking at companies that have good fundamentals. Um, and and when, when an economy is in a downtime, liquidity becomes king. So you, you tend to be looking at companies that will be able to add to your, the, to, to your liquidity because of intense, because everything price are going up. So you want to be able to meet up to your demand. So you might not be looking at those capital appreciation so much this time because it might not come because of the global headwind, inflation, rising interest rate. But you are beginning to look at which of these stocks can give me good liquidity in the area of dividend payment. I think that is what investors right. are looking and at. And then. hopefully no other headwind you know, comes well, the market, <laughs> the market has no predictable oh, event. It's, it's, yeah, the it, black event. Swan event. But we expect that there could be positivity during the week. And uh, we've seen the three central bank governors meet in Portugal. Uh, we've seen that, um, like I said, the United States um, President Joe Biden will be meeting with major oil companies and also looking at how to in reduce the pains to their citizens in terms of um, suspending petroleum tax for now. That will bring down the cost of gas. And we, we, we see that China beginning to open up after the um, uh, closing up due to the fear of um, COVID. The COVID. Right. So those are some positive that we think will play 
in the coming in the coming. These markets are begging for a, for a catalyst. <laughs> Definitely, <laughs> they are begging for a catalyst. And again, if you look at uh, uh, today the aviation market, the, 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 the global market. I mean, when you're looking at aviation stocks in the United States, seems to want to begin to experience some bullish because of the of the uh, July 4th July 4th right. public um, 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 independence holiday. As of today, there have been a lot of delays, a lot of about 3 point something million people want to travel from one place to another. So many people. So many people, and yet they are having flight delay, exactly. flights because the demands is high. So those stores could be enjoying um, good patronage that in the coming time. days in terms of capital appreciation. All right. We'll continue the conversation just uh, after this break. Do stay with us. This is Capital Market. Welcome back. You're still watching Capital Market live on Channels Television. Well, let's look at some uh, stories that made headlines during the week. Well, the Nigerian Exchange Limited uh, Global Reporting Initiative, Africa, and the Principles of Responsible Investment uh, on Wednesday, they organized a webinar tagged Empowering Responsible Investing uh, Through Data Metrics and Environmental, Social, and Governance, talking about uh, ESG integration. Virtual event was set up in line with the exchange's commitment to foster the growth of long-term sustainable finance in the Nigerian capital market in a bid to help investors, companies, market regulators, and practitioners by any opportunity for sharing experiences and strategies on how investors make sound investment decisions using ESG uh, metrics and uh, data. Well, uh, both uh, local and foreign investors on the Nigerian Exchange Limited traded 485.4 billionaire worth of equities in the second quarter of 2022, an increase of about 40% when compared to 346 billion uh, traded in the first quarter of 2022. Data by the boss notes that the uh, growth in value of equities market traded also reflected in volume as again 143% to 54.27 billion in the uh, second quarter of 2022 from 22.26 billion reported in the first quarter of 2021. Well, deals on the bourse uh, rose by 8.5% to 320,778 in uh, Q2 2022 from 295,000 reported uh, by the NGX for uh, Q1 2022. Analysts noted that the improved liquidity in the system in the last six months is responsible for positive performance of the Nigerian uh, market. And the Nigerian Exchange Limited has suspended nine companies from its facilities, effective uh, yesterday, the companies, according to a, a statement from the NGX, include African Alliance Insurance PLC, uh, Niger Insurance PLC, Royal Exchange PLC, Echo Corp PLC, CNI Leasing PLC, Mutual Benefits Assurance PLC, Coronation Insurance PLC, uh, Premier Payne's PLC, and Adova. Well, we still have with us here Mokhtar Mohammed, CEO of Finance with uh, Mokhtar, still with us right here. Great to have you still stay with us. Well, looking at that um, suspension there, how did you see it? Good news. You know why it's good news? Corporate governance. That's the main reason why they're suspended. They have not been able to bring their result up to time. I think it's good for the market. Um, we People complain about, oh, you could just do anything in the Nigerian market. I think we should give it to the Nigerian Stock Exchange Group. I think they are beginning to raise up their game and make sure that you ought to do what you have to do at the right time. You see that even in the year ends, we get the year ends result. They give them a grace of about three, I mean, about one month. And after that, if you are not submitting those results, you are paying fine. So it's good. And that's why you see that we are now beginning to have close periods. We have some of the banking companies giving us close period as early as the last trading day of the, of the, of the, of the half year, and which is very, very good. It, it doesn't used to happen like that. I think it's good for corporate governance, and it makes them, they, they seem to have a lot of integrity. It, it takes a lot for them to do what they are doing, and I think we need to and appreciate And they actually that. achieve that. Yeah. Quite, quite interesting. But how do you think this will shape investor sentiment well, you towards have to those stocks? stocks? That is a challenge, and uh, most of these stocks will still have, um, like Adova, I'm sure they are going to resolve the issues and we might see that stock going down. It's one of those stocks that investors have really felt could do so well because of the multi nature of its tense in terms of investment in almost all critical sector in Nigeria economy. So um, I'm sure they're going to resolve their issues. And those stocks will, will be re-listed re, um, back again into the exchange. But then uh, most investors that are there may have to wait for a long time 
before they can acquit their money because I'm sure by the time they are re-listing and they are forced to bring out these results over a long period of time, it could be very negative. And that's what being what has been affecting Owando PLC for a while because of the result comes out and you have to give two or three years result in one um, um, financial year. So it doesn't doesn't add well to the And, and how will this uh, you know, impact other companies listed there? Um, if you look at some of these equities that you mentioned, um, you're talking that uh, most of them are actually in the insurance sector, which have not been nice to investors even after their recapitalization. Um, if you know that sector has been one of the most underperforming sector in the Nigerian exchange. Mm. After even the recapitalization, some of the companies that have gone down. So it's not really a sector that um, um, investors are really playing. And most of the investors that play in that sector is only playing um, companies like name insurance, companies like uh, um, 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 maybe Cornerstones, and sometimes uh, Crusader Insurance. And now, you know, Crusader Insurance, also most of the people that play those space, Ico Insurance, they play those space because of the attractiveness of those companies in terms of their other holding companies like being connected to pension from administrators. You have Crusader Pension, you have Ico Pension. So, those are why attracting investors to the space, not really the insurance business, because if you look at the insurance company thus far from 20, when they had the recapitalization up to now, they have not performed well, whether in terms of dividend payment, in terms of capital appreciation, this seems to be just there. So most investors that play that space, please for the short test possible, that's why it remains one of the most volatile space there. After one month, some investors don't want to play for two weeks because of the low price nature. Some of them buy as low as 20 cobble, 40 cobble. Once you get to 45 cobble, they are about they want to sell up. And you see those stock goes up and then crash down. So I don't think it impacts on negative because that sector is already not a sector that the only challenge I have is Adova being there. So I think um, and, and I good. saw that uh, the insurance sector actually did well this week. <laughs> yes, that's what I'm saying. Most time, people that play the insurance space are looking at those little capital appreciation games in terms of they are the type of stock we call the penny stock. Penny and stocks. they are the most volatile. So mm. most of them just... And they capital. give good gains, though. Yes, capital appreciation, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. But when if you have to wait for some time when the results comes out from this company, they are always not very good. Right. All right. Uh, looking at the performance there with uh, local and foreign investors on the exchange, that's 485.4 billion naira worth of stocks in, in, the, in the second quarter. How do you see that? I had an improvement, like you said in your report, and that's a, a confident booster to the market in terms of volume, in terms of um, we have a number of a lot of people. That means a lot of people actually came to the market in the first half of the year. I think it's, it's good. But the good news I keep saying is that we are having more Nigerian playing the market than the foreign investors. And more if Nigerians. you go further, you realize that about 90% of the market in Nigerian market is driven by Nigerian investors. Do you think more people are trading on their phones now? Yes. Compared most, people to... are, most people are trading on their phones. Most um, um, stockbroking firms are beginning to give people a real way to make your demand on the phone and then execute it as in real times, I think that also is helping, and some investors are beginning to have knowledge on how to trade on their own, and they are giving that leeway. So I think that also is helping in terms of those. Uh, because I, I came across uh, an app uh, a few days ago that you could actually buy stocks on it, and I'm wondering, is, is it safe? Just you know, what, one thing you need to know you is just go if, through the no, traditional. You, you, you see those those when you see those app. It, the way it's done, it doesn't mean that you just buy directly from a big, just go to the app. You must be registered with a stockbroking firm first. So by the time you go to those apps, sometimes you see that those apps are linked to most of these stockbroking firms. And if you have an account with the stockbroking firms, when you put in your account number and your details, it pop up for you to do your purchase. And also, it's also based on how much liquidity do you have in the stockbroking firm. Do you have money in your account? In the, so it's not more or less like you just go in there and those app. No, you must be registered with a stockbroking firm. There's no direct license for you to do individual license for you to trade on your own because right. of the volatility. You must go through the stockbroking so firm. So they're always mostly linked to... Linked, yeah. Yeah. All right, so I, I want you to look into your crystal ball. Going to next week, what do you see happening in the market? <laughs> well, I, I, I still see same of same. Uh, we see the market oscillate between the positive, but uh, like I said, what we'll be seeing is that investors will be seeing value in some, um, or what invest, most investors will be doing in what we call value investment. 
value investment is tend to look for companies that are going to add value in the long term. So that is the key driver in the times of, of uncertainty, right. like what we have now. So when you look at that, then you look at value investment, then you begin to look at um, Nigerian Brewery, you, need to, you look at Guinness PLC, you still look at them, um, you still have to look at Seplat, you also still have to look at MTN. Then you look at the conglomerate like Dangutis and Cement also, definitely infrastructure the case, making them make so right. much money in Nigeria. Yeah. And, then, and you f don't get your eyes off the four major banks in Nigeria because of their interim dividend payout that will give you good dividend yield. And also if you are looking for a tier two bank to invest in that have been doing very well and had a very positive um, uh, 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 rating just during the week, Fidelity Bank also. So... Um, quite quite a number of them to 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 yeah, look out for. Sure. It's not the time to be uh, to do mini mini mine anymore. And uh, no, you need choosing. to make up your mind. going in there now, and um, and uh, like I say, value investment is value key. investment is key at the moment. Not just investing because you want to make no blind investment. No blind investment. No, no. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Mukta Mohammed, CEO of Finanza with Mukta. It was great having this conversation with you. Always a pleasure being with you, laddie. And thank you for uh, staying on and watching. I'm sure you enjoyed some of those uh, uh, deep uh, uh, trading terms there with, uh, with Mukta. There. He gave us a lot of uh, good uh, information about how to trade this market, trading volatile times. It is not easy to be an investor at this time. Thank you so much uh, for watching. I'm Ladi Williams. See you next time.